Nigeria has a population of 170 million people, and half of these are women. Women are instinctively nurturing, and they take that skill to, the, to their businesses as well. They are also natural relationship builders. That allows them to build strong customer relations as well as they are less distracted generally from their businesses. There are a number of barriers that women face to doing business in Nigeria. Some of them are cultural, some of them are social, and some of them are economic. But I think that over the past couple of years, we've seen the cultural barriers diminishing because of the rate of urbanization and you know, the rate of um, women empowerment generally. Right now, we are dealing more with the issues that are economic. Our women in Nigeria are just generally or exceptionally entrepreneurial. And we're using the 5x20 program to enable that. 5x20 is a global initiative by the Coca-Cola Company. And it simply means enhancing the livelihood of five million women globally by the year 2020. We in Nigeria have taken it upon ourselves to target 500,000 women, and that is 10% of the global objective. The NDC or Managed Distribution Center is a business model developed by the Coca-Cola Company and implemented throughout Africa. The centers are administered by independent entrepreneurs, increasingly women, who distribute the beverages often on foot to small, hard-to-reach geographical areas. Women play a variety of roles in the Coca-Cola business, the most significant being in the distribution and retail aspect. In fact, women own and operate over 70% of our distribution and retail businesses. I have 29 MMDCs, out of which 23 are women. If I rated my best three customers, they are women. We train them on profit-making business, how to know the difference between their capital and their profit, and to manage their business. Mrs. Adebisi Adebayo has been a Coca-Cola dealer since 1997, and her business was doing very well. However, when her husband and ex-policeman died in 2008, leaving her with the responsibility for their three children, she was concerned about how she would manage alone. Then in 2011, thanks to the 5x20 program, Adebisi was among a group of Coca-Cola dealers in Lagos whose commitment and performance was rewarded through their appointments as operators of the Managed Distribution Centers, or MDCs. She was enrolled for business and financial skills training in the same year and has attended several refresher courses since. Her working capital was also boosted by a revolving trade credit of about $13,000, which she turns over weekly. I can say categorically that she has doubled the volume and her workforce has increased. She is now very important in the community and driving business there. When uh, I lost my husband, I wanted to pull out. But after the training and be doing my business by myself and the thing is going on gradually, I didn't even believe that it can be like this. So and it helped my family too. Now two of them they've graduated and one is still in the private university. If I go down to each of the MDCs and look at their retail level, every day we enlist new retailers. And are they by your Lawal, a lot of them started with few crates. They are very big women. They fend for their family. This is also uh, driven by the fact that a lot of our outlets are in neighborhoods. They are close to homes. So it fits into the, the life uh, style that is uh, there as well. Our business in Nigeria generally has a very low barrier to entry. You can literally start a business with less than $10. Um, second, we provide training in terms of business skills, training and development for women or our retailers and distributors in general, which helps them to sustain their businesses. And third is that we also enable access to capital for our retailers with a, with a special focus on our women entrepreneurs. This has enabled women who have established themselves and who are running originally small businesses to be able to expand.
Um, we select the women who attend this training in collaboration with our bottling partners. Uh, they are the ones who manage these relationships on a day-by-day -day basis, and so they know what is the skill set that the particular woman requires in order to improve how she runs her business, and then we send her for that particular model of the training. Eagle Square is situated in the central district of the capital, Abuja. It is surrounded by ministries and other public institutions, which provide customers for its bustling food court, where Mrs. Tete is the MDC or Managed Distribution Centre operator. Each of its outlets specialises in a different variety of dishes from a specific region to cater for civil servants and other customers from various ethnic groups. I started this business in year 2006. And my main activities is that I sell to food vendors in the Eagle Square food courts. Here, as you can see, we are many here, the women. We are different tribes. Yes, I faced a lot of challenges. To, make, to start the business is not easy. Coca-Cola bring us chairs, table. They really help us a lot. God bless them. The business, I use it to support the family and I create employment for other youths because I have about 12 of them working with me. Um, I run a restaurant here in the Eagle Square and I have about 11 workers that work with me in my shop and we cook different type of food. I do both indoors and outdoor catering. You know, it is not easy in Abuja here to start this type of business because of the high cost. Coca-Cola and NBC have been supporting us here by uh, branding this place, providing chairs, tables, they gave us ice blocks, ice coolers. And so we ensure that they have ice on a regular basis. Um, in some areas where it is very difficult, we actually have ice manufacturing plants to ensure that they are able to receive ice blocks, which also facilitates you know, the volume that they are able to sell in a given day. Uh, for some of them, we provide umbrellas. For some of them, we provide trolleys and push carts, depending on what level of business they are into. And for those who are in conventional shops where it is safe to put in you know, fridges, we also have cool as, as fridges that we also give to the women. These are things that we contribute to them that ordinarily they would have spent substantial sums of money if they were to invest in these things themselves. Eagle Square Food Court is my number one outlet. Every single day I come here because the volume has so much grown. And when I come here, as I'm arriving, the ice truck is arriving. They deliver the ice to them, they put in the ice bin. The vendors here come to pick the ice. Then they get the truck carrying the product comes along too. They get their products, they, they ice the products in the ice bin. This happened in the early hours, so that by 12, they can start selling their food with cold drink. The, this business has a great impact on me personally and my family. Through this business, I've trained my children. I assisted my husband and family. I've built a house. I bought a car. I'm now an experienced person in business. There is no business that I cannot lay my hand on now. Uh, my advice to other African women is that they can be a dealer, a retailer or an wholesaler. If they're into this business, they will make it very fast and it's really going to help their family a lot. Women really form a very strong bedrock of uh, the economic activities and it's the foundation by which homes are growing uh, in Africa. So I believe that this has a big economic impact on the families, it has a big health impact on the families, it has an impact on education of their children and the overall well-being of society in uh, Nigeria. Beyond the impact on their businesses or their finances, we find that as individuals, the women become even more confident. They can contribute not only in terms of finances, but also in terms of decision making in the households and of course in decision making in their communities as well. So they become more productive and more representative members of communities. We would like to set an example for other large corporates that are operating in Nigeria on how you can use your value chain to give back to the community and at the same time enhance your business. The UN MDGs, what that has done is to provide a broad framework 
where all the stakeholders, whether they be private sector, whether they be civil society organizations or governments, and all sorts of non-state actors can actually come together. They have a framework within which you can make concerted efforts to achieve very definite and trackable goals. So for instance, if we're talking about nutrition, we, had, um, we have Nigeria currently trying uh, to join the G8 initiative for food security and nutrition. That's a very definite target to lift 50 million people out of poverty within the next decade. So that's really good. It provides that framework. And without the Millennium Development Goals, I don't think that we could have been talking all together, singing from the same hymn sheet. So the UN has been very, very instrumental. Thank you to all the partners and contributors who've helped to make this first series of It's Africa's Time possible. And a very special thanks to all our viewers. We'll be back again soon with series two. But for now, thanks for watching.